Do you ever ponder the heavy importance of latches in digital circuits? Let's delve into it. At their core, latches are the primary building blocks of digital circuits. They play a cardinal role in storage and modification of binary information, the sequence of ones and zeros that constitute the base language of all digital systems. Try thinking on these lines. Every single piece of data in the digital dimension, ranging from the programming operating your cherished app to the SMS you just dispatched, is depicted in binary form. It's the unassuming latch that preserves this binary data, thereby enabling digital systems to operate and interact. Let's get into the details. Latches are engineered to preserve their output based on the input they obtain. For illustration, consider an SR latch, which is one of the most elemental forms of latches. Here we have inputs, S for set and R for reset. Paint a diagram of an SR latch here. When the set input is activated, the latch's output is established at one. On the other hand, when the reset input is actuated, the output is reset to zero. Insert a table here demonstrating this. But what transpires if both the set and reset inputs are activated simultaneously? This leads to an undefined state, a circumstance that is typically circumvented in digital circuit design. This is due to the fact that undefined states can lead to unpredictable outcomes, something that is favored in the precision-driven world of digital circuits. Thus, the role of latches in digital circuits goes far beyond plain storage. They are also integral to the course of instruction creation. By positioning latches strategically at the input and output of a circuit, we can create a wide array of instructions, enabling the complex operations powering our digital universe. Thus, latches are not just components, they are the bedrock of digital logic. They are the silent warriors that keep our digital world running, storing and altering the ones and zeros that formulate the language of digital systems. Without them, the digital gadgets we depend on daily from smartphones to our laptops would simply halt. In the scenes to follow, we will probe further into the realm of latches, studying their diverse categories, their creation and their significance in the semiconductor industry. We will use diagrams to illustrate how different types of latches like D-latch, T-latch function, and elaborate on flip-flops, which are just extensions of these latches. We'll also look at how these latches are implemented in complex circuits, using specific diagrams and tables where required. Continue watching for an in-depth understanding of this. As we continue our journey, buckle up as we are about to dive deeper into the fascinating world of latches. Our next stop is the SR latch, the fundamental building block of digital circuits. This part of the journey will take us through the workings of the SR latch, its construction, its operations, and its roles in various digital circuits. Scene transition with text, chapter two, exploring the SR latch appears. We'll be using diagrams, truth tables, and examples to make the concept as clear as possible. So get ready to uncover the secrets of the SR latch the latch that forms the base for all other types of flip-flops. Let's get started. Today, we're going to plunge into the captivating realm of SR latches, the most basic form of latch systems. We'll embark on our voyage by comprehending the SR set reset latch, an indispensable cornerstone of digital circuitry. Known as preset and clear state latches, SR latches are the pulsing heart of memory circuits and sequential logic. To dive deeper, an SR latch is a circuit ingeniously constructed of two cross-coupled NOR gates, or alternatively, two cross-coupled NAND gates. Let's picture. Imagine two gates, their outputs connected to the other's input, forming a feedback loop. This, this structure is key in creating the latch mechanism. The latch comes equipped with two input channels, S for set and R for reset, along with two output channels, Q and Q. The Q output is the output, whereas Q is essentially a mirror image or the inverse output. To shed more light on this, we'll employ a truth table and visual diagrams. In our table, S stands for set input R for reset input. When the S and R inputs are both zero, the latch remains steadfast, preserving its preceding state. We call this the hold state. Now S is one and R is null. The latch ascends to a state where Q equals one and Q equals zero. This is termed as the set state. Conversely, if we flip situation and S equals zero while R equals one, the latch descends to a state where Q equals zero and Q equals one. We label this as the reset state. However, we encounter a curious anomaly when both S and R equal one. This condition leads to an undefined or invalid outcome. 
reminiscent of an uncharted territory in Latchland, a condition that can trigger erratic behavior in real-world applications. Therefore, we generally steer clear of this state in practical implementations. An important feature to note is that the SNR inputs of an SR latch operate asynchronously. This implies that they can fluctuate at any given moment and the outputs Q and Q will mimic these changes. This trait renders the SR latch an adaptable and dynamic component within digital circuits capable of retaining or modifying its state in sync with the might be wondering, why are we meticulously scrutinizing this seemingly elementary latch? The answer is the SR latch is the bedrock upon which all other variants of flip-flops are built. Comprehending it clears the path for us to journey through more intricate digital circuits. It's analogous to mastering the alphabet before embarking on reading and writing. Once you've secured a robust understanding of the SR latch, you've taken a significant stride towards mastering the intricate dialect of digital electronics. So that's our immersive expedition into the universe of SR latches. We've disassembled its structure, dissected its operation with the aid of a truth table, diagrams, diagrams, and explored its role in the larger context of digital circuits. We've also highlighted intriguing undefined state when both inputs equal one. Understanding the SR latch is fundamental as it forms the scaffolding for all other types of flip-flops. With this sturdy base, we can now venture forth to uncover other facets of circuits. So strap in and let's proceed to uncover more gems in the mesmerizing world of digital electronics. But how do we make these latches? Let's delve deeper. Latches, like any other electronic circuits, is a process that involves using a set of specific components. At the core of these components are MOSFETs, resistors, inductors, and capacitors, often referred to collectively as R, L, and C. Let's start with a MOSFET, which stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. This is an essential transistor used for boosting or altering electronic signals. MOSFETs are critical in the construction of latches. These transistors consist of several metals and semiconductors. The domain of transistors is vast and complicated, comparable to an entire book chapter, which we will delve into later. Let's break it down with the help of our first diagram. Here we can see the basic structure of a MOSFET. Now, why are these components so important? Well, the primary function of a latch is to store and modify binary values, represented as 1s and 0s. By cleverly placing latches at inputs and outputs, we can generate a variety of instructions that form the basis of digital logic. When we're dealing with high-speed circuits, the traits of the printed circuit board or PCB become critical. Look at this second diagram. The PCB is the skeleton of any electronic device, offering a platform organizing the components and establishing the necessary links between them. Now, picture this, you've got your MOSFET, your resistor, your inductor, and your capacitor, and your PCB ready for assembly. With our third diagram, you can see how each component is placed in its designated spot, soldered in place, and there you have it, you've crafted a latch. But remember, it isn't as simple as assembling a puzzle. Each piece has to be carefully selected, and their placement needs detailed planning to ensure the latch operates correctly. With that said, Let's not overlook semiconductors. These are the unsung heroes of the digital age. Semiconductors have a conductivity level that falls between conductors like copper or gold and insulators like glass or rubber. They are the most critical part a transistor. Semiconductors have brought about a revolution in the field of electronics. Our next table highlights how semiconductors have enabled the miniaturization of electronic components leading to the creation of compact, powerful, and energy-efficient devices. Imagine a world without smartphones, computers, or even the internet. That's a world without semiconductors. In essence, every chip, be it a processing unit or memory, consists of logic elements. Latches play a critical role in processing these binary values. Our final diagram shows how to design these indispensable latches. A transistor and the trio of RLC are needed and at core of these transistors are semiconductors. Large-scale semiconductor fabrication becomes pivotal, given that a single chip includes numerous semiconductors. Giants in this field include Apple, Qualcomm, AMD, Samsung, and Taiwan's TSMC, with TSMC arguably leading the pack. Creating a latch is a captivating process that weaves together a myriad of electronic components. 
All right, let's pause for a moment and look at how far we've come. We started with latches and their role in digital circuits, delved into their creation, and explored the intricate world of transistors. We've learned that latches are pivotal in processing binary values, forming the basis of digital logic. We've seen how components like MOSFETs, resistors, inductors, and capacitors, collectively known as RLC, play their part in the creation of a latch. But the real star of the show? That's right, semiconductors. These tiny powerhouses are at the heart of any transistor, and thus our latches. They've revolutionized electronics, enabling the creation of compact, powerful, and energy-efficient devices. Now, you may be wondering, what's next? Where do we go from here? Well, hold on to your hats, because we're about to dive into the world of semiconductor fabrication. This is where raw materials transform into the microchips that power our digital universe. Before we get there, let's throw in a fun fact. Did you know that the smallest transistor is just one nanometer in size? That's 50,000 times smaller than the width of a human hair. Now imagine the precision required to create such a tiny component. Next up, we'll be exploring the meticulous, multi-step process of semiconductor fabrication. We'll see how tech titans like Apple, Qualcomm, AMD, and Samsung with TSMC leading the pack have mastered this art and science. So buckle up and stay tuned. A single chip consists of an abundance of semiconductors. It's only natural to question, but why does this matter? Let's plunge into that subject. Semiconductors are the essence of digital technology, acting as the cerebrum of your smartphone, computer, or any other tech gadget. These minuscule components manage the electrical flow within circuits, enabling digital logic gates to operate. These gates in return form the latches we've been discussing. Creating semiconductors is not a simple task, but a sophisticated process known as semiconductor fabrication. It holds a significant place in technology. Here, raw materials morph into potent microchips propelling our digital cosmos. But what goes on behind the scenes in semiconductor fabrication? It involves numerous meticulous steps, each represented as a stage in the following table. Table depicting stages of semiconductor fabrication. One, design developing a chip blueprint. Two, photolithography, transferring the design onto a silicon wafer. Three, etching, removing the excess material to reveal the chip's pattern. Four, dopant implantation, altering the chip's semiconductor properties. Five, metallization applying metal layers for connections and many more. Each stage demands immense precision and vigilance. A minor error can lead to a flawed chip, causing considerable losses. This daunting task is taken on by tech titans like Apple, Qualcomm, AMD, and Samsung. They have mastered the art of semiconductor fabrication, churning out billions of top-notch chips every year. But one company that arguably shines in this field is Taiwan's TSMC. They are the largest dedicated independent semiconductor foundry globally with exceptional expertise in semiconductor fabrication. Diagram showcasing TSMC's contribution to the semiconductor industry, TSMC has pioneered developing and incorporating advanced process technologies, allowing them to produce smaller, faster, and more energy efficient chips. In conclusion, semiconductor fabrication is an amalgamation of art, science, and business. It's the linchpin for efficient, dependable, and robust digital circuits. As we continue to become more dependent on digital technology, the significance of this process only amplifies. Semiconductor fabrication is a fundamental process determining the performances of a digital circuit. And indeed, it is the backbone of our digital world. Next, we turn our attention to another pivotal latch type, the D-latch, also known as the data latch, the D-Latch holds a special place in the tech world due to its unique mode of operation and distinctive features. This latch type, often endearingly labeled as a transparent latch, functions through the use of two distinct inputs, D, an abbreviation of data, and a clock signal. Let's delve deeper into this mechanism. Imagine a table with two columns. The first is labeled clock signal, and the second, D input. Now, when the clock signal status is high, the output of the latch echoes the input at the D terminal. In layman's terms, the D latch becomes a pathway for the data input to pass directly to the output, thus earning its transparent nickname. This is because when the clock signal is high, the data passing through it essentially doesn't see the D latch. Let's now consider what transpires when the clock signal goes low. 
is where the latch part of the D-latch springs into action. The moment the clock signal dips, the D-latch swiftly shuts its gates, retaining the exact data that was present when the clock signal dropped. This data is stored and the output is maintained till the clock signal experiences its next rise. Look at it this way, the D-latch is essentially a data time capsule. It captures a particular moment's data, safeguards it and holds onto it until it's time to process the next set of data. The rhythm of the clock signal controls this entire process. A diagram would further clarify this. Imagine a flowchart with the clock signal at one end and the D input at the other. The clock signal determines whether the D-latch is transparent or holding data. Proficiently understanding the operation of a D-latch allows us a sneak peek into the complex choreography of data and timing that forms the core of digital electronics. This choreography keeps our digital world functioning, and the D-latch is an integral performer in this dance. The D-latch, an essential foundation stone in digital circuits, has a wide range of applications, from simple data storage and buffering to forming the basis for constructing memory units in computers. In conclusion, we can compare the D-latch to a table where the columns of data and clock signals intersect. This intersection, driven by the rhythm of the clock signal, is what keeps our digital world in sync. Let's take a moment to review what we've learned today. We set out on an exciting journey through the intriguing world of latches, beginning with the most basic form, the SR or set reset latch. As a fundamental pillar of digital circuits, the SR latch, with its set and reset inputs and normal and complement outputs, plays an integral role in memory circuits and sequential logic. We took a look at the behavior of the SR latch, understanding how it can maintain, set, or reset its state based on its inputs while avoiding the undefined state, where both inputs are one. In a table format, let's summarize this. Set input sets the state, reset input resets it, and both inputs being one is a state best avoided. An illustrative diagram of the SR latch also helps visualize this concept better. Next, we dove into the making of these latches, noting the essential components required such as a MOSFET and RLC, resistor inductor, capacitor. We emphasized on the importance of PCB characteristics in high-speed circuits. All of this built on the intricate domain of semiconductors, which form the transistors at the core of these latches. Venturing further, we discussed the importance of semiconductor fabrication. We considered the capacity to produce a large quantity of semiconductors is a cornerstone in the digital realm. Recognizing leading companies like Apple, Qualcomm, AMD, Samsung, and Taiwan's TSMC, we realized the pivotal role of semiconductors in our digital age. Finally, we introduced D latches or latches, a diagram comparing the SR and D latches showcasing the two inputs, data, and a clock signal of D latches would be a great visual aid. Remember, these latches follow the input at the data terminal as long as the clock signal is high. This adds another dimension of complexity and functionality to our digital systems. In conclusion, latches, be they SR or D, are vital in processing binary values, serving as the spine of our digital circuits. From the smallest handheld devices to the largest supercomputers, latches are tirelessly storing and manipulating data, shaping the digital world as we know it. Remember, latches are indeed the heartbeat of digital circuits, an imperative subject for anyone interested in digital electronics. The first rule of channel is subscribe channel. Second rule of channel is click like. This channel will make you smart.